course, I'm still, like I keep saying, 20 years old. I think everything is is the glory. Well, after Evo, you don't think that way. You learn to appreciate. People don't understand. The world does not owe you anything but the privilege of earning it. You earn it, you get it. In Yiddish, it's called Barshert. Loosely translated, it means destiny or meant to be. And indeed, the telling of Sammy's story was meant to be. My name is Joe Conforti, the director of this film. I'd like to give you some background on its genesis. I spotted an elderly man parking his car and saw Iwo Jima survivor on his license plate. Being a former Marine, I approached him and thanked him for his service on Iwo. He immediately broke down as he began to recall his combat experience and I knew immediately I had to interview this unique man. The result of this chance encounter by two former Marines is this film. The telling of Sammy's story was truly meant to be. And this night, we had movies there. We're sitting there, had the movie, and it's pouring rain. Let's get back to the tent, the hell with this. And we went back to the tent. As I came up to my tent, don't bring Bernstein in, keep him out, I hear. Then what the hell now is going on? Everything that I owned was in a sea bag, a Navy sea bag, sitting right near my bunk, Everything I owned personal was thrown out of the tent. My bunk was turned upside down and thrown out the side of the tent. The sea bag was dumped outside, everything. I was hysterical. Again, they got the officers down there. Somebody got in the tent, in the company, and destroyed everything. And on my bunk, he pinned a note. Hitler missed you. I'll get you. Well, who the hell is Hitler? I don't even know who the hell Hitler is. I'm so naive. I, I learned fast. Two Marines from my father's bunk. One, his name was Skatchel, and the other one was Bartolo. Big brawly guy from the Bronx and Skatchel was from Chicago. And they stood out in front of these men and said, anyone here touches Bernstein are gonna have to go through me. So they all dispersed, they went back to the tent, my dad picked up his stuff, and he asked somebody to do something which was against the rules of the United States Navy. And what he did was he had somebody on the backside draw the Star of David. The next day, the officers lined up all the men, 250, in front of the mess hall, and they said that they're going to find the man who did this to Bernstein. We have a good idea who it is. We will court martial you. You'll be sent immediately to a naval prison and a man came down from the, it was a string of tents there, past the tent, went to his tent. He uh, was willing to be discharged and taken out of the company immediately that morning. What happened to him, I don't know. I couldn't care less, because I'd kill him. It was explained to me by Sam that uh, the fellows in the outfit used to pick on him a lot because he was Jewish, and my dad, and Frank DiPartello, both Italians, they said, anybody wants this guy, they gotta come through us. And so they were the ones that stood up for Sam, and Sam never forgot it. What was driving, let's say, the anti-Semitism in the military? Sammy had no idea, he had, he had never experienced that. Well, part of it, it was just cultural, you know, this was in the 1930s and 40s, but you, you take a, a young, young man like Sammy, who had never been 
away from uh, the New York, New London area, and uh, it was probably an eye-opening experience.